However, if you are asked, now listen to what I'm saying. This is the attorney in me talking. I do, I cannot lie to you, but the failure to acknowledge it is not a violation. So let me give you an example. If you ask, Raymond, has someone died in that property? I literally could say, Cameron, at the Modulin Group, we have elected to not discuss this topic. I didn't lie to you, but I didn't say yes. Everybody get what I'm saying? The failure to acknowledge is not a violation. The only violation is if I lie to you. So I could literally go, oh, shiny keys and distract you and you forget about, that's fine. I just can't lie. I, hey, Raymond, did someone die on the property? Well, step over the chalk outline and let's talk about it. All right. Now, it's entirely possible that the buyer says, look, my offer is contingent 100% on you telling me yes or no. I literally could still go to my seller and go, hey, they want to know. And the seller goes, don't tell them. I'm willing to lose the offer. Okay. So I go back to you and go, hey, we don't talk about this. It's up to you. You want to go find it, look it up, but we are not going to confirm or deny either way. As long as I don't lie, I cannot say yes. That's legal. Got it? Thumbs up. All right. Megan's Law. Everybody know what Megan's Law is? This is the child or sex offender law. Megan's Law is not a reporting law, meaning they don't send you information. You must seek this information out. Your client must seek this out. I will tell you, two years ago, I had a good friend of mine. I helped buy, helped him, be, was his agent personally. I've done two deals in three years. He was one of them because we were in the military together. We found a house in Beach Grove, Indiana. Between the time I left the house and they said, Raymond, we want you to write an offer. And the time I got home to actually get on the computer and write the offer, his wife called me and said, Raymond, do not write the offer. She looked up the sex registry, indianasheriffs.org or watchdog.com. And it had... It literally, she sent me the map, dig this. The house was here and like right here were like five people living that had, were on the sex registry. And they were taking care of their grandkid who was three and four, they had two grandkids. So she said, we are not writing that offer. We're not moving in that area. Okay, I can, my obedience says not to write the offer. I don't care for what reason. You told me not to write it, not writing it. But she literally looked it up. We are not supposed to tell people. When somebody says, hey, are there other perverts in the neighborhood or whatever, you would say, I do not represent the neighborhood. If you want to go look it up, tell me to write it or not write it, that I will do. And Robert and Kat, exact example. We were going to write the offer. And by the time I could actually do it, she called me and said, don't. All right. All right. You certainly do not want to go, well, across the street lives. Because what if you're wrong? Now you might have cost a deal. And the guy you pointed out may have a libel or slander case against you. So you would say, dude, I don't represent the neighborhood. I don't know. 
I don't know the composition. I don't know, the color, I don't know any of that. All I know is this house, 149.9, five bedrooms, three baths, anything other than that, you need to look it up and tell me, do you want to write it or do you not want to write it? That's all I care about. I don't care why. I don't even need to know why. You just say, we're not writing the offer today. Okay. So Megan's Law, you must seek out. It is not a reporting one. All right. That's agency. Any questions on how agency works? So what we covered Friday was the brokerage as a business. Today, we cover the relationship between the client and the agent, called an agency relationship. Tomorrow, we are literally going to talk about how we create it. We're gonna talk about the forms. We're gonna talk about the contracts itself. And we're gonna talk a little bit about more math on figuring commissions and things like that. All right. So tomorrow, once again, you use the same login that you have been using. And we start at nine, folks. All right. So just like course, be here at nine. Feel free to log in about five minutes till I'll be logged in. And if you have other questions, we can go over it then. Between now and tomorrow, you can call me or text me or Facebook or Pigeon, Carrier Pigeon or whatever. All right. Any questions before we say goodbye? Yeah. So I have one about the question you asked in regards to, I guess, it's obedience to your client. So regardless, as long as it's not breaking the law, right? your obedience lies with the client because on the quiz in the back on chapter nine on number eight it says a real estate broker hired by an owner to sell a partial of real estate must comply with and i thought it was a but unfortunately it's d so no so matter what, nine, so on the in the book yeah number eight because i thought it was a but it's d and i just i just want to understand that no matter what, if I'm complying by obedience to the client, I'm not understanding that. A real estate broker hired by an owner to sell a parcel of land must comply with, and you put the common law of agency in the state which the property owner lives, and the book is saying all lawful instructions of the owner? Yes. I could see arguing either one of those. I've come across a few, Raymond, that I feel like um, can be argued in both ways. How do you determine yeah. that in the test? Because that's what's screwing me up. Well, on my test, there's nothing this questionable that should be this close. Okay. On the, on the state exam, I would hope there's nothing this close. All right. The common law, I'll tell you what I will do. I will research this and figure out why A is not the answer. The only thing I can figure A and D both seem to me, I'm wondering if A or D is missing a word that would change it. Uh, because if you are hired to sell a parcel, obviously, yeah, you good, good point, Lashana. Either one of those, I think, you guys know what caveat mTOR is, letter C? Caveat emptor is Latin for let the buyer beware. There used to be no buyer's agents up until the late 80s. This is one of the major changes. 
the seller had an agent and the buyer just worked on their own. And if the selling, if the seller could lie to the buyer, it was up to the buyer to find it out. The NAR said to protect the client the best, <clears throat> they created an agent to work with the buyer, just like an agent works with the seller. So we got rid of caveat emptor, let the buyer beware in the 80s. So that C is not the answer. Right. B, obviously, if they're working with the seller, they wouldn't listen to the buyer's instructions. A, the common law of agency in the state. And, okay, I, I see why A is probably not the answer. And this is okay. a really, really picky answer. A real estate broker hired by an owner to sell a parcel of real estate must comply with the common law of agency in the state in which the property owner lives. No, you would comply with the common law of agency in which the state the property is in. Oh, because it said prop where the property owner lives? So theoretically, you could somebody this is such a splitting of hairs yeah. theoretically if you have an investor that lives in california trying to sell an indiana property you would comp comply with the state of indiana laws not, not where he lives that is that is a very i mean mm -hmm. i didn't catch it until i really thought about it it would be uh, a would be correct if you put the common law of agency in the state in which the property was located, that would make it correct. But yeah. there is a slight chance that the property owner could live in a different state than the property is in. And you would follow the state of the property, not the state of the owner. Got it. But D is always correct. D is always correct. Instructions of the owner, no matter what, because we have obedience. As long as they're lawful, no matter what state he's in. I had a guy out of Michigan, or a guy out of Canada that told me not to call him on weekends. He said, don't call me from Friday sundown to Monday sunup. He, I don't know this to be true. He was of the Jewish faith, and I guess on the weekends, they did not use electricity. I don't know if that's true, but that's what he told me. So they didn't watch TV, they didn't listen to the radio, they didn't read emails or faxes. He said, if you get an offer Friday about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, just save it till Monday morning because I will never respond to you. I said, okay, that seems weird, but that was his directive to me, which is not illegal, unethical, or immoral. He just didn't want contacted over the weekend. I'm like, okay. So even though he lived out of state, it was still a lawful command. All right. That is a pretty, pretty weird question. I don't think it would be anything that splitting of hairs on the exam. At least I did not on mine. So, all right. I will see you all tomorrow. All right. Bye. Have a good day.